वेलकम टू आर चैनल व्यूअर्स दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल इज अबाउट मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एक्यूट कॉलिजाइटिस वी हैव डिजाइन दिस वीडियो टोरियल इन अ वे दैट मेडिकल स्टूडेंट एंड सर्जिकल ट्रेनिंग कैन अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ एक्यूट कॉलिजाइटिस इट्स डायग्नोसिस ग्रेडिंग बेसिक पैथोफिशियोलॉजी बिहाइंड द एक्यूट कॉलिजाइटिस एंड हाउ टू मैनेज दीज केसेस इफेक्टिवली वी हैव कंबाइंड थ्रोटिकल डिस्कशन Uh, with a real time uh, real life case of a lady with forgotten cbt stent and i hope you will like the content so this was a case of 65 year old female who was homemaker by probation she is a known case of hypertension hypothyroidism a uh, patient had a history of uh, laparoscopic colostomy four years back and after one year of lap coli she underwent some endoscopic intervention the details about the procedure were not available and no records were available for review this lady presented to emergency department with history of pain abdomen fever with chills and vomiting of last 7 days for last 7 days she also gave history of yellowish discoloration of eyes and high colored urine and the pain was off and on for last 6 months her general physical examination revealed that ictus was positive and the rest of the vital parameters were normal on abdominal examination there was mild tenderness in the right hypochondrium and rectal examination revealed normal color stool and there was no other finding please pause this video for a moment and think about the diagnosis in this case so the clinical diagnosis a case of obstructive jaundice status post laparoscopic colostomy and with history of endoscopic intervention one year after the surgery with acute cholangitis why we reach the diagnosis of acute cholangitis that we will discuss in this video so the diagnosis of obstructive jaundice is evident as the ictus was positive and patient gave history of high colored urine though another uh, characteristic finding of clay colored stool was absent by acute cholangitis so any patient with history of fever with chills and obstructive jaundice the first diagnosis is acute cholangitis until alnes proved otherwise so friends just remember any patient of obstructive jaundice presenting with fever and chills we have to keep the first possibility of acute cholangitis until alnes proved otherwise the routine work of patient revealed serum bilirubin total 9.5 and conjugated was 5.67 that is a obstructive pattern when the total conjugated bilirubin is uh, when the conjugated bilirubin is more than 15% of total uh, we have to keep the possibility of obstructive jaundice our otpt was normal but the alkaline phosphate was markedly raised uh, that was 1467 serum mileage and lipase the basic workup of, of any uh, patient presenting with emergency was normal her hemoglobin was uh, lower side 9.6 total leukocyte count was 6400 and platelet count of 3 lakh 70000 uh, as per the protocol uh, we did a routine uh, chest x ray pa view of this patient the chest x ray was unremarkable except for a radio pack shadow as highlighted in the circle seen in the exposed part of the abdomen in the abdominal x ray we noticed again a radio pack shadow which was clearer more clear as compared to chest x ray and this was a comma shaped uh, radio pack uh, object which was not matching any uh, clinical description since patient has a history of uh, endoscopic intervention after one year of surgery uh, we kept the possibility of a forgotten cbd stent in this case This is a picture of a CBD stent which we use for biliary drainage or biliary bypass and so this is the superimposed picture of the CBD stent and we thought that the lower end of CBD stent has broken and now patient has presented to us with obstructive jaundice The USG abdomen revealed liver was normal size, pneumobilia was noted, which is a, a sequel of uh, previous ERCP and CBD stent in C2. 
uh, with CVT stent was in C2 and they also reported a CVT calculus or 12mm and concretion around the stent. Since patient didn't give any history of uh, stenting, so we retros retrospectively review the history and uh, there was a history of endoscopic intervention as I said earlier after colostectomy. So it was likely a case of forgotten stent, uh, forgotten CVT stent for last three years and uh, the lower end of stent has broken at its own and the concretion and stone formation around the stent led to the obstructive jaundice and uh, infection in a obstructive system led to acute cholangitis and presentation in this case. So uh, these are the uh, this is the paper uh, uh, for Tokyo guideline 2018 which is the latest edition about diagnostic criteria and severity grading of acute cholangitis. I urge the viewers to go through this uh, paper which is available freely on PubMed and I'll share the link uh, in description for downloading and uh, all uh, medical student uh, especially surgical trainee should uh, understand this uh, these guidelines uh, very clearly. The first edition uh, of these guidelines by Yamamoto group was given in 2007 and second edition 2013 and uh, latest edition in 2018. Coming to acute cholangitis, any biliary obstruction or stenosis will lead to biliary stasis and as while it is a good culture media and in the presence of especially in the presence of stone it leads to secondary infection so biliary stasis plus infection is the cause of acute cholangitis. The benign cause of obstruction are usually bile duct stone or tumors and a broken CBD stent with concretion around the stent uh, in the present uh, indexed case. The biliary stenosis or blockage leads to elevation of the intrabiliary pressure within the biliary system and flushes the microorganism or endotoxin from the infected bile into the systemic circulation inducing a surge leading to fever with chills and triggers. So that is the basic pathology behind the acute cholangitis presenting with fever with chills and rigors. Any talk about the acute cholangitis cannot be complete without discussing about charcoal stride. Uh, we can remember charcoal stride by PFJ that is the uh, I mean uh, short form I use P for the pain, F for the fever and J for jaundice. So manifestation of biliary obstruction leading to upper abdominal pain, fever and jaundice it is charcot stride. Acute cholangitis long has been uh, has long been diagnosed on the basis of charcot strides and charcot stride is very uh, is highly specific for the diagnosis of uh, acute cholangitis. So any patient presenting with patient any patient of jaundice obstructive jaundice presenting with abdominal pain, fever and jaundice. So our, uh, it is very specific that a patient is suffering from acute cholangitis. But the limitation of this method is that uh, charcoal triad has a very low sensitivity and if we strictly follow these criteria of upper abdominal pain, fever and jaundice, we would be able to diagnose only 26% 26 of the patient of acute cholangitis. The reference for these uh, figures uh, and uh, statement is Tokyo guidelines 2018 as I said earlier. So as I said the only 26% uh, of the patient we will be able to diagnose with the help of charcoal stride, charcoal stride though the specificity, specificity is high but such a low sensitivity is not accepted. So here comes the role of Tokyo guidelines 18 which are the latest uh, guidelines for uh, diagnosing uh, and managing acute cholangitis. So Tokyo guideline for diagnosing acute cholangitis has three criteria A, B, C and A is systemic inflammation, A1 is fever with or without shaking chills and laboratory evidence of inflammatory response in the form of raised TLC count or CRP. Second part is cholestasis that is patient uh, should have jaundice or there is a laboratory data of abnormal liver function test. A third is on imaging that there is a uh, features of obstruction in the form of biliary dilatation or there is a evidence of etiology on imaging uh, that can be stricture, stone or stent etc. So if patient has one item in A that patient is presenting a fever with or without chills or laboratory evidence of inflammation that is raised TLC or uh, CRP and one item in either B or C then it is a suspected diagnosis. And if patient has uh, one item in each of the criteria that is A, B, C, then it is a confirmed diagnosis. We can remember these three criteria as 
एस सी आई दैट इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया एंड एस इज सिस्टेमिक इन्फॉर्मेशन सी इज कॉलिस्टेसिस एंड आई इज इमेजिंग सो फॉर डायग्नोजिंग एक्यूट कॉन्जाइटिस वी शुड रेफर द पेशेंट टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया फॉर फीवर पेशेंट शुड है डॉक्यूमेंट फीवर ऑफ मोर देन थर्टी एट डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड और डब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट लेस देन फोर थाउजेंड और मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड और सी आर पी मोर देन वन मिलीग्राम पर डेसीटर एंड पेशेंट विल बी कॉल्ड जॉन्डिस इफ द ब्लू बिन लाइब्रेज मोर देन टू मिलीग्राम पर डेसीटर और एबनॉर्मल लिवर फंक्शन टेस्ट दैट कैन बी ए एल पी जी टी पी गामा जी टी पी ए एस टी और ए एल टी एंड इट शुड बी मोर देन वन पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स ऑफ द रेफरेंस लिमिट सो कॉलेज टेस्टिस दैट इज जॉन्डिस इज द की क्लिनिकल फीचर ऑफ क्यूट कॉलेजाइटिस एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द कंपोनेंट ऑफ चारकोट साइड एंड जॉन्डिस विल बी ऑब्जर्व इन सिक्सटी टू सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट एज पर दोक्यो गार्डन एटीन द डायग्नोस ऑफ क्यूट कॉलेजाइटिस स्टिल कैन बी मेड इन द एबसेंस ऑफ जॉन्डिस बेस्ड ऑन एलिबेटेड एल्कलन फॉस्फोटिस जी टी पी ए एस टी और ए एल पी सो द प्रजेंस ऑफ जॉन्डिस इज नॉट अ मैंडेटरी फीचर फॉर डायग्नोजिंग एक्यूट कॉलेजाइटिस दैट वी हैव टू रिमेंबर वेरी क्लियरली एनी पेशेंट प्रजेंटिंग टू एमरजेंसी एज ए सस्पेक्टेड केस ऑफ क्यूट विल इन्फेक्शन वी शुड मॉनिटर एंड स्टेबलाइज द वाइटल साइन वी शुड आज पर एप्रोप्रिएट कंसल्टेशन and uh, diagnose the case as per the tokyo guidelines 2018 uh, for management of acute cholangitis or acute cholecystitis we should grade the patient as per the diagnostic criteria and treat according to the flow chart of tokyo guidelines which we, which we will discuss in the subsequent part of this video tutorial friends there is a app available in the app store uh, as tokyo guidelines 2018 you can download and uh, accordingly this is a very uh, simplified and easier method to diagnose and treat these patients so this part of the video we are demonstrating the use of that app for diagnosing and managing a patient of acute cholangitis so after opening uh, the app you have a uh, interface of acute cholangitis acute cholangitis and antibiotic as we tick on the acute cholangitis uh, menu we can tick the uh, uh, basically a b c part and uh, in this patient we had presence of fever so fever we ticked there was a jaundice and uh, on uh, liver function was deranged in the form of bilirubin was high there was 9 and there was a dilated biliary system and imaging showed a broken stent with a concretion and stone in the uh, cbd we have a component uh, in the a and b and c as, as i said if there is a uh, all the components of a b c are present that is uh, sci are met then we have a confirmed diagnosis of acute cholangitis if uh, the component a is present and either b or c then the diagnosis is probable with the help of same app we can grade this patient for uh, severity of acute cholangitis so uh, these are the criteria uh, for assessing the severity for acute cholangitis uh, so uh, for grade 3 that is severe acute cholangitis uh, is defined as acute cholangitis that is assured with onset of dysfunction at least in any one of the following organs or system so there should be at least one organ or systemic dysfunction that can be cardiovascular neurological respiratory renal hepatic or hematological For, uh, so any dysfunction or organ failure it is severe acute cholangitis moderate acute cholangitis will be when the wc count is more than 12000 or less than 4000 it is high fever more than 39 degree centigrade and age more than 75 hyperbilirubinemia that is total bilirubin more than 5 or hypoalbuminemia uh, when it is less than 0.7 of the standard reference range Oh, and for um, uh, moderate acute cholangitis, uh, should have at least one of the following condition out of five. That is WBC fever, age, bilirubin, or hypoalbuminemia. But for severe, any organ dysfunction or any uh, system dysfunction will be labeled as severe. And if the patient is not meeting the criteria of severe or moderate acute cholangitis, then he will be he or she will be labeled as. acute 
mild acute cholangitis. Uh, early diagnosis, early bleeding needs, and or treatment for etiology and antimicrobial administration are fundamental treatment of acute cholangitis. And uh, uh, it is not relevant for grade 3 but also for grade 2 and grade 1 also. Therefore, it is recommended that patients with acute polyngitis who do not respond to initial medical treatment, that is generally supportive care and antimicrobial therapy, should undergo early bleed drainage or treatment for etiology uh, that we will see in the flowchart also. So, coming back to the app again, as I said, we can diagnose the acute polyngitis and we can grade the severity also. So, in this patient, uh, there was no organ dysfunction or there was no systemic dysfunction and uh, patient had only uh, symptom of fever uh, with the uh, chills and high bilirubin that was 9 and 5 was the upper cut limit so uh, there was only one criteria met in the uh, moderate grade also so we have a diagnosis of mild that is grade 1 acute cholangitis so coming to the flow chart grade 1 that is mild acute cholangitis which is, is present in the index case we started with antibiotic therapy and general supportive care uh, and uh, it is advised to treat the etiology and bleed as uh, is indicated for grade 2 uh, along with the antibiotics and general supportive care, early drainage is indicated in the same hospital admission. For grade 3, urgent bilirubin drainage, that patient uh, should undergo a bilirubin drainage in the form of endoscopic or uh, ultrasound guided uh, percutaneous transpatic bilirubin drainage uh, at priority, that is, uh, as soon as possible, maybe within 24 hours. Viewers, pause the video and uh, please. Uh, think about the next investigation or intervention you want to do for the index case. We manage this case with the help of antibiotic and uh, she uh, had shown an uh, improvement and so now what should be our next uh, line of management. As I discussed, uh, we have to treat the etiology and bleed drainage is required to drain the obstructive system. So we schedule this patient for ERCP and on ERCP the broken CBD stent was noticed uh, uh, in C2 and there were multiple large stones uh, which were extracted and uh, CBD was cleared. The previous stent could not be retrieved and they placed another stent of 7 French into 10 cm length double pigtail stent for the bill drainage. This is the uh, abdominal x-ray after uh, ERCP and uh, you can notice uh, you can notice two uh, stent uh, one is broken and another is proper double pigtail stent in the abdominal X-ray. Patient improved after bleed drainage and uh, has been planned for CBD exploration after four weeks and after optimization of the patient condition and uh, generally four to six weeks period is recommended before any intervention, surgical intervention uh, to let the acute polyneitis and inflammation settle. Thanks for watching viewers. Uh, I hope you like the content. Please like, subscribe and share. The channel subscription is free for a lifetime. Happy learning. Thank you very much.